Today we are in St. Charles, Missouri at the Coin Show here in St. Louis, and today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take five of these silver dollars that were sent to me by a viewer from the 120 fake silver dollars, and we're gonna take them in and see if this dealer that I know will make me an offer on them. So basically I'm gonna say, hey, I have some silver dollars to sell you, what can you give me? And we'll see what he says. My assumption is that he will notice they are fake immediately, but I will also ask him to tell you why he identified them as a fake after he does, because many people criticized me in that last video saying, I wish you would have put them side by side and told us why you thought they were fake. So let's go have a dealer tell us by going in the show and trying to sell these. My channel is sponsored by sdbullion.com. New customers can get their first order of gold or silver at spot by going to sdbullion.com forward slash new. All right, so Mike, I wanted to uh, see what you would do buying these five silver dollars I brought to the show with me. So um, guys, this is Mike from Mid-America Coins and I have these five silver dollars and I'm just, you know, with the way the market is, I'm just curious what people are actually paying for silver dollars right now. Tell me what you could do me on those. Well, the first thing usually when I'm doing, I, I look at the coins and grade. Uh, I got a little bit of problem with these. Okay. I, I would pass on these. Why would you pass? Because they're fake. All right. So guys, Mike did not know about, you didn't watch my video yesterday because no, you were at the show. No, I did not. So I had, Mike, just so you know, I had a guy send me and I have to send them back to him and I have to put a note in there so that if they get intercepted, you know, there's no legal issues. But he had inherited 121 silver dollars. All of them were these. Oh, no. I'm sorry for him, but yeah. So uh, yesterday I uploaded a video um, and I showed these off. And immediately when I took them out of the box, I knew. Now, one of the things that some of the viewers criticized me about was that I didn't show them why I immediately knew these were fake. And a lot of people wanted to know what I saw. Why did I see these were fake immediately? So what I thought I'd do, given that you just noticed that they were fake as well immediately, what tells you that these are fake just by looking at them? Okay, for starters, when I started looking at them, I seen the rim was wrong. See how smooth that is on that side and how it's pooped up? See, it's supposed to be a little pooped up on both sides. With this condition, there should be nowhere on that rim. It should be up above that. Okay. The other thing is the color was all wrong. The date is uh, looks pretty good, but the stars are wrong. So could you grab your a real Morgan Silver Dollar that you have here and just kind of do a comparison uh, for the viewers? Yeah, let me grab one here. Hang on. We're, this, we're gonna do a raw versus a raw. So there okay. ain't... Uh, Okay, so we, we're getting close to the color. Now this one here is a real one. Uh, unfortunately, it's I'll a show little- Show to the camera. Yeah. It's a little better date, but we're, we're, we're not worried about the date. But if you look at the rim here, let's start off with this rim. See how much higher this rim is on this side versus that one? Okay. Now let's flip this over. Wait a minute, look, we got a little bit of a high rim there. Where's our rim at on this? You see, you see that? Can you, I don't, here, let me tilt this so you can see it better. I can take my finger and I don't feel nothing. I take my finger on this, it pushes it up because there's a rim there. Then the other thing, they, take a look, look real closely at the eagles. It's a dead giveaway. See how flat that breast is? Yeah. On this particular year, the breast was not flat. This is almost close to the end. They already had all that flatness after the early 90s out of there. You're, you should have a nice round breast. Gotcha. It's flat there. Yeah. But, you know, on all of these, I mean, I see they tried to make them look like they was wore, wore down. They put too much. If you look at your feathers, this is the other thing. Take a look at these feathers. How, how much detail you got? Well, you should have some type of detail in that breast. And there's right. One. So, yeah, they really did a, to me, they did a crappy job. I was able to spot it immediately. All right, guys, now we're here with Keith from the Coin Crew. Make sure you check out his channel because he has a great one. But Keith already saw my video, so he knows that these $5 right here are fake. But Keith, one of the criticisms, I said this to Mike that I got in the video, uh -huh. is I didn't share why they were fake. I didn't share why I knew immediately that they were fake. I didn't compare them. So what I was hoping you would do is show the viewers Look at these really quick. You haven't seen them in person yet. No, I Look at them really quick and tell me why you know they're fake well, after you see them, because you're gonna notice it immediately. Well, you notice, I, I got my glasses right here as I do with every show, I got them close. 
Uh, let's look at them. And yep, they're fake. <laughs> well, uh, the easiest <laughs> the easiest way. Well, you asked me to tell you, and I'm telling you. But the easiest way I see is we're seeing a lot of flat, mushy surface. The coloring's a little off. The breast feathers, as you can see, just aren't to the sharpness they would be if it was a real dollar. Real flat on the surface here of the hairline. It's just everything is flat. Now, it's what, mushy. wouldn't a heavily circulated piece be flat? You are correct. A heavy circulated piece will be flat. But what the difference is, what you're going to see with a heavy circulated piece is you're going to see some parts of it is going to hold a little bit more dirt. If you'll look at this flat one, the dirt is kind of all up in the same area. You'd see more dirt in the hairline of a circulated one than you will this. Instead, you got the a lot of the area is looks like it's polished. Okay, it's, it's being apparently made to look like it's circulated, although it's not. So they're intentionally taking this coin and wanting to make it look like it's circulated. And uh, this one here that I'm holding, it's light. They're all light for the record. Oh, are they? Yeah. They're See, all... I, I knew I seen your video in the headlines, but I didn't watch it. I didn't have time to watch it because I was traveling down here to this show here in St. Charles. Wow, these these are they're all really light. Yeah. So Mike, let me ask. Uh, you know, a lot of people think when they think about like fake silver coins in the market, they think about modern places that they come from, like Timu and you know AliExpress, so on and so forth. These he inherited, which means the person he got them from had them for years. You've been in this business for what thirty plus years now? Uh, about forty-seven now. Forty-seven years. Can you explain to me and to the people watching, were the fakes just as bad back then? Were they more prevalent? Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, I mean, if you go back in time, even the 1700s, somebody was faking something. Every time we turn around, somebody gets this trick that they think they can make a lot of money. Just remember, back in the 80s, we seen a large, large hoard of Morgan dollars come out. And guys got stuck with them. So what they do, they, t they start mixing them up and putting them in tubes. Uh, my brother and I, years ago, him and I bought six tubes from this guy while he was in Michigan. And luckily, my brother Richard opened the tube up and we noticed at the bottom, four or five of every one of them in every tube was fake. We, unfortunately, we was lucky. Security there, they grabbed the guy. We got our money back. It could have been a whole different avenue we, if he wouldn't have wanted to look at these. So guys, this has been going on since the 70s and 80s. So let me ask, is is it more prevalent or less prevalent now than it was back in the 70s and 80s? Uh, no, uh, th they have gotten a little bit more creative. Now they're doing fake slabs and everything else. I mean, it's really getting, it's bad out here. But this stuff with the, these inheritance, these were put back. Nobody had them checked out back then. So we're seeing it more and more come out of the woodworks. People bring it in collection. I just bought one three weeks ago. That was, there was about 20 or 30 of them that were fake. Not all of them were fake, but a nice little handful was, and it was bad for the people because they had no idea what they had. Yeah, it's unfortunate that it happens. Let me ask you one more question about these. Are, is it more, like the fakes that are coming out now, are they better than the ones back then? Because these ones were clearly pretty bad. Uh, yes, that, well, you gotta remember, we're, technology today is a lot more advanced. We got machines that will do nice laser cutting and everything. So yes, the thing is me, I've been doing it a long time. A lot of times I can put one in my hand and go, wait a minute, this don't feel right. It sounds almost really unbelievable, but it, it happens a lot. I can grab one and feel it just within a fraction of its real weight. Fair enough. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate you giving us a little bit more insight into this. Oh, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you inviting me on. So do you see a lot of fakes coming in your store right now? And then I have a second question after you answer that one. Uh, right now, we haven't seen a lot of fakes, but we have seen a lot in the past. I don't know what's going on with other people, but I don't know. So let me ask you this. The thing about these is this guy inherited them, which means these have been out there for a long time. So a lot of people, they think about fakes and they think about stuff coming out of China, coming off of Timu, coming out of AliExpress. You know, these didn't exist probably when this person, you know, the aunt that gave these to him got these. So have fakes been in the market this long? Well, Alibaba wasn't around then. However, 
The term, are you joshing me, comes all the way back from 1883 with the racketeer nickel. So yes, they have been around this long and even longer. Okay, so you've been in this business for how long? Uh, about 75, I started collecting, started dealing around 1982. Okay, so you've been, in, for, needless to say, a long time, 42 years as a dealer. How often have you seen fakes over those years? And, uh, a and, couple times a year you see some fakes. I mean, it's not an uncommon thing. Okay, do you see more fakes now than you did 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Mm, no, not really. Okay. I mean, you're always seeing the same couple, well, not the same ones, but you're always seeing a few every year. Now, are the fakes coming out these days better? Like, are they harder to tell that they're fake than they used to be like these? Like these, to me, and I, I understand the people that don't have the trained eye that you and yeah. I and Mike and on them do, might take a little bit longer to look at them. But the, some of the ones I've seen now are really good. These are not good counterfeits. There's no doubt about it. So it does lead me to believe that these have been in someone's collection for quite a while. But today, with all the equipment, believe me, B, they can counterfeit anything and almost get away with it. They're getting that good. What can people do to prevent themselves getting things like this in their collection? Uh, one of the things you could do to prevent yourself from getting this is buy your coins at a reputable coin show or a reputable coin shop. Don't go buying them just from any, any Craigslist listing, any eBay listing. Don't go buying them at a flea market unless you know the person. Buy them from who you know. Now let's say somebody does buy coins, you know, at a less than reputable location. They get it off Craigslist or let's say no. at a flea market. Does coin shops like yours, do they allow people to bring them in for authenticity? Yes, we do allow people to bring their coins in. They don't have to sell them. We'll check them, we'll weigh them, we'll check them for authenticity and let you know what you got. And if uh, one of the good you. things you may want to do is throw it on a scale, you know, try to check yourself with what you're capable of doing. Which there's a lot of tools out there, which I've talked yes. about. We're not gonna talk about them today, but there's a lot of ways out there that you can do that yourself. But it's nice to know like a coin shop would do that. Do most coin shops do that? Most coin shops do offer that service for free. Fair enough. All right, Keith, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. All right, so now that I'm back in my studio, I wanted to take it a step further and take a look at these three silver dollars and ask you really quick, which one is fake? Now, while you're looking at them and thinking about it, I also just want to quickly say thank you. The criticism that you guys gave me the other day for that video and the shortcomings of it, I received and I received them very clearly and it's comments like that that make this channel better. So when I have failures like that, please leave a comment and let me know. As long as you're respectful, I will always listen and I will try and improve and those comments definitely improve this channel. So thank you again. All right, so now that you've had some time to look at these, do me a favor and leave a comment down below, pause it if you need to, and tell me which one of these are fake. All right, did you leave a comment? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now that the fake is the 1900S, and let me show you why. We're gonna compare it to this 1921, and look at the, well, first off, look at the color. The color on this 1900 really looks off to me. It doesn't look like silver, and the way that the darkness around the edges, which can happen on a real coin, it just doesn't look right to me. The whole thing doesn't look right. But if you wanna get a little bit more detailed, take a look at States of America right here. See how much farther away the letters are from the rim on the real one versus the fake one? It just doesn't look like right. It looks like this one, like the image was expanded just a little bit. And I'm sure there's even more minute details that you could tell if you looked really close. But just from a glance, it looks to me like this one is fake. Now, the reason I have this 1899 here is because you can see this 1899 is heavily circulated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to all three of these using the pocket pinger, and we're gonna weigh them because this being the least worn and this being the most worn, you would think all three of these, this would be the lightest, but it's going to be the fake. All right, so we're gonna first start off with the ping test. I'll go ahead and put our real 1921 here in my pinger, and I'm gonna take the stack stick and I'm just gonna whack this a few times and listen to the sound. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful sound coming out of that. Let's go ahead and do our heavily circulated one. This one's gonna have a slightly higher pitch because it's so worn, the rim is worn down, but it's still gonna sound mostly the same. All right, you heard that. Now let's do our 1900S fake and listen to this. It sounds so different. The pitch is so much higher. Here we go.
It's actually a beautiful sound, but it certainly does not sound like the other two silver dollars. So there is the comparison between two real ones and our fake one. What about the weight though? Remember, these were very underweight. Even Keith said he felt that they were really underweight. Let's go ahead and pull up our scale here. All right, I angled the camera so you could see this a little bit better. It didn't fit out. So the Morgan silver dollar weighs 26.7 grams. Here's our 1921. It should come to basically exactly that because it has little to no wear. And bingo, you can see we have exactly 26.7 grams. Now this one here, our 1899O, this is going to be a little bit lighter because as you can see, it actually has worn away the rim and worn away a little bit of silver as a result. But you can see we are still at 25.8. Even with all of that wear, all of that circulation, we are still less than a gram off. Now we'll look at our 1900, which is way less worn this, than this 1899. And you can see 23.1. So there's no way that coin could lose that much weight with as little wears as on it. So that is a little bit better of a comparison and a side-by-side. -side, and we'll do one more time. We'll do the 21 versus the 1900. So you can see them nice and up close and take a look at both coins. We'll flip them over to the reverse. Take a look again. I hope that helps. So there you go. I hope this filled in the blanks for the last video I did. I do apologize about the oversights in that video. If you guys liked this and you want to support the channel and help me do more videos, make sure you subscribe and leave a like. It helps YouTube recommend this video to others, and I really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.